All right, Shalom, Israel, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Mashiach, like you shy. It is to say, Yahweh, being named in Heavenly Father, who the world called God, and Yahweh Shai, being named his only begotten Son, who the world eagerly called Jesus Christ. This is Brother Kasadi from W5 uh, Philly. It's like Jersey Philly. And um, you know, the title of the video, we want to go through every parable of Yahweh Shai. Right? So we want to start a new series. And I'm going to title this video, something to the effect of parable number one of Yahweh Shai, right? Which is going into the candle under a bushel. All right? That's the first parable that Yahweh Shai had brought out. You read Matthew, the fifth chapter. You read uh, Mark, the fourth chapter. Uh, 21 to 25 you read luke 11 33 to 36 this is the three accounts that he brought out of the same parable um and y'all wish i had many parables you understand i'm gonna kick things off so like i'm gonna kick things off with the book of sirach chapter 39 and verse 1 all right so it's very uh important in these last days that you know you're getting it the prophecies you're going through the law, you have understanding on that, but you also want to have the understanding and get the sense of what Yahweh Shai brought, broke down and taught the people. So this is the book of Sirach, chapter 39 and verse 1. It says, But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in a meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecies. It says, He so Someone has given their, their mind to the laws of the Most High, and that's where you're going to be. You're going to be going through the scriptures. You're going to be going through the breakdowns. You're going to be going through the prophecies, going through the law. So like you're teaching the people, this is how you're going to be. You understand? When you're giving yourself over to the wisdom and understanding of the Most High God. Verse 2. He will keep the sayings of the renowned men. Right? You're going to keep the sayings of what's written in Psalms. You're going to keep the sayings of what's written in the book of Daniel. You're going to go through the book of 2nd Ezra, right? You're going to go through the book of Revelation. You understand? And where subtile parables are, he will be there also. So that's a man that's, his mind is on the Lord. Hey, where you find them parables, you're going to find that man there too. Remember, the Lord has different chambers. Let me go to this real quick. There's different chambers um, in the house of the Most High God. All right. This is the book of Song of Solomon, chapter 1, and I'm going to go to verse 4. It says, draw me, we will run after thee. Right, so the Lord is drawing us and calling us to come back home and serve him. It says, we will run after thee. The king had brought me into his chambers. We will be glad and rejoice in thee. We will remember thy love more than wine. The upright love thee. So the Lord said, it says, the king had brought me into his chambers. What is he talking about? Now, this is two folds. When a, us being drawn back to the Most High, when our salvation comes, when the Lord returns and brings a, a, the, the elect and beams up the elect, and we're going to be drawn into those chambers, those chariots. But also another fold, us coming back home to the wisdom and understanding of the Most High, we're being drawn back to these scriptures. And every uh, compartment, so to speak, as far as a prophecy, That'd be one uh, department. Um, you would have laws. You would have uh, parables. You would have just wisdom scriptures and how to conduct your life. Like the book of Proverbs and the book of Sirach and Job. You understand? These are different chambers. So a part of us being in this truth, and the Lord said, yo, we got to give our minds to the laws of the Most High. We got to be in the prophecies, but we also must be where the subtitle parables are as well. So we're going to go to, like I mentioned, we're going to kick it over to the Lord's very first uh, parable. And at most I willing, if the Lord permits, you know, over time, we'll go through each and every parable that the Lord has ever brought up. All right. And give the sense. So let's kick it off with the book of St. Matthew, chapter 5 and verse number 14. This St. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 14. It says, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Right? So the Lord said, first and foremost, Yahshua Allah, hey, you're the light of the world. Now, does it mean that other people come to us and when our house is dark, they use, they take us, they grab us up and you maybe their lights, their electricity went out and we go inside the house and we can light up the whole house. That's not what the Lord is talking about. 
We're the light of the world if we're keeping the commandments of the Most High, which is the true light. You understand? And we're going to go to the book of, um, let's kick it over with Proverbs. All right? Let's kick it over with the book of Proverbs, chapter 6. All right? Proverbs chapter 6 and verse number 23. And it reads, For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instructions are the way of life. So we're the light of the world when we're keeping those commandments of the Most High, which is the true light. You understand? If you being evil, if you being a nigga, if you being a nigga woman and things of that nature, and hey, you're not the light of the world no more. Now all the other nations, they can look at you, they can ridicule you, they can reproach you, they can mock you, they can look down upon you, they can call you scum and, and every damn thing under the sun other than your name because you're no longer the light because you're no, no longer keeping the commandments of the Most High. But... As Israelites, us coming back to the Heavenly Father, us believing in the Lord, us keeping the commandments, we're now made as the light to the world. Do you understand? We're literally going to be, let me go to this real quick. Let me go to this in um, Hosea. It's like I want Obadiah. Right? This is the book of Obadiah, uh, verse number 21. It says, and Savior shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau. And the kingdom shall be the Lord's. So the Lord said that there's going to be saviors that's going to come up on Mount Zion. Who are these saviors? I thought we only believed in Yahweh, Yahweh Shah. So these saviors is talking about, it's talking about the men that's keeping the commandments of the Most High. The elect in that day, they're going to be known as saviors to the world. Let's go to this in Isaiah chapter 42. We're, 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 it's like the elect, I'll say it like this. The elect will be known as the saviors, given that these, uh, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to bring this verse out real quick. Given that um, the other, uh, the, the role for the elect, I should say, is to bring the light to the Gentiles, all right? Keeping the commandments, um, teaching the people, even in that day, the heathen and the Gentiles are going to have to keep the laws. Right, and when you read uh, Zechariah the fourteenth chapter, when you read Isaiah the sixtieth chapter, they're going to be forced to keep the commandments. This is what it mean that they're a light to the Gentiles. This is the book of Isaiah chapter forty-two, and verse number. I'll start at verse six. It says, "I, the Lord." I start at verse five. Right, Isaiah forty-two and verse number five. It says, "Thus said the Lord God," or it's like it. Thus said God the Lord. He that created the heavens and stretched them out. He that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it. He that giveth breath unto the people upon it and spirit to them that walk therein. I, the Lord, have sake, I the Lord have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand. You understand? And will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles. So what the Lord is saying here is. And he's raising up men and servants and teachers and prophets in the last days to go out to Jake that doesn't have the understanding, to wake up the lost sheep of the house of Israel, to bring them back to the Most High. Even at that same token, those same men, they're going to be used when the kingdom comes to uh, grab up the heathen, to bring them back um, to the land to offer up sacrifices when you read Zechariah the 14th chapter. To keep the commandments of the Most High, not willingly, but by force. Because these nations, they're still going to be in the flesh, and they're not programmed to serve the Most High. This is why uh, Revelation, the second chapter, in the 25th verse, it says that we're going to have to literally rule the other nations with a rod of iron. Right? We're going to have to beat it into them. Make them submit to Yahweh Shem Shai. Make them submit and stop damn eating pork. Make them submit and stop drinking blood. Make the damn uh, you ish man, right? Submit and stop damn finding little, little children. And wherever else is in that nasty time moved. So uh, they're going to have to come back to the most high. Right? So again, that light is symbolic or really what it's going into is it's talking about the wisdom and understanding of the most high. Again, we only light. To the uh, other nations, we're known as the light of the world because we have to keep the commandments of the Most High. We're the children of the light that are children of the darkness. This is Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 6. 
Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. We shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. And this is what we want them to do. Us stand out there boldly for hours on hours. Them walking by, them ridiculing us, them calling us whatever. But we still standing and still keeping our faith in the Lord. And that's honoring Yahweh Bashim Shai. That's glorifying the Heavenly Father's name. We don't stand out there and teach because we just want to go out there and teach. We had nothing better us to do. We came in the truth and, and you know, we found out about the truth. We opened up the Bible. We said, look, we got to be the Israelites and we just, we just want to be out there. Well, yeah, we do want to be out there, but the Lord is causing us to be out there so that we can be light to all the world. All the wickedness that's in the earth and the Mosai has the only true light out there because we're keeping the commandments of the Mosai. Let's get another verse on this. Let's go to Baruch chapter four. All right. So when Yahweh Shai is breaking down these parables, he always, you know, he'll say verily, verily, meaning if you have ears to hear, right? This is not for everybody. Remember, the Lord, the Lord don't want everybody to get the, get this knowledge. If this is the first time you're hearing this, we hate to break it to you, but that's the Lord doesn't want everybody to receive this. That's why the Lord said this in Matthew chapter 19. This is saying Matthew chapter 19, and I'm going to go to verse 11. I saw that 10. His disciples say unto him, if the case of men be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. Right? Because what is breaking down is the discussion of divorce and, um, you know, a marriage. Right? Matthew 19 verses 1 on down to about 9. Right? And how wish I was breaking down what Moses had uh, ushered in in Deuteronomy 24, but what the Lord had ultimately from the beginning ushered in in Genesis, the first and second chapter. Now, let's continue on. Verse 11, here's the point. But he said unto them, all men cannot receive this saying, save they to whom it is given. So all men, they can't receive these parables. And it's the first parable. I mean, it should, for you that's in this truth, you should be able to pick up easily what the Lord has put down. But again, the Lord said at the end of the day, all men can receive this parable. So this Baruch chapter four, verse two, it says, turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Right. So we want to take hold of the laws and, and commandments of the Most High. That's our life. That's who we are. That's what brings us to a kingdom. That's what brings us with the Most High. The Lord doesn't have delight in people that don't have understanding. So he's going to give his understanding to you so you can understand him. Right? Let's read on. Turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. So you want to keep these commandments so you can be illuminated. The, the so-called real Illuminati. All right? Not the men that's behind closed doors in the dark. All around a table with hoods on and they, they chant into other gods. That's not that's not the that's not the real illuminated ones. That's, they're not the real light bearers. They're the wicked. They have the light of this world. And the Lord said in Isaiah, let's go to that. We don't want the light of this world. And we hate this world, man. It's tired of having I, I don't want to go to work tomorrow. Right? Or I mean uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We don't want that. I know some of my brothers that like, can't even call out on the Shabbat. Got to work 70 hours a week, back all hurting, got arthritis in their hands. We don't want this world no more. We don't, we don't want this body. We don't want this world. We don't want nothing to do with this nasty, I want to say some things, but the white man, the so-called white man, the so-called Arab man, the so-called Japanese man, so-called Chinese man, so-called African man, we don't want nothing to do with them. All right? We don't want nothing to do with this economy. That's about to crash any given day now, right? They literally, literally the stock market had crashed over a few thousand points, and then just in one day, twelve hundred points it goes back up. So you know that things isn't right. The economy isn't right. The food isn't right. The water isn't right. The damn air isn't right. We don't want nothing to do with this place. So you know, again, they're pushing out their own light. That light they're pushing out. It's truly darkness. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, and verse number um, 20. 
It says, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. Right? They call uh, being who you are or, you know, believing in yourself and coming as you are and, and doing whatever pleases you, uh, do what thou wilt. That, that's pushed out in the earth as righteousness. Um, you speak out against it, you're you're considered judgmental. Um, you think you're the Lord. What else they say? They they say other words that we can't say. You know, uh, it start with an A. If you have ears to hear, they they say all different types of things. Literally, we can't even say certain things on our own YouTube channel. But I thought this country had freedom of speech. So let's read on. It says, "Warn to them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter." So they literally make evilness, and now that's pushed out, and all the world accepts it. It's acceptable for three-year-old kids and four-year-old kids to now find out about other genders that's just being made, newly made in the earth. They saying there are sixty-three different genders. That's the, the the evil, the darkness that's been put out or pushed for light in his world. This is why we got to come back home to the Most High, man. So again, the only true light is by keeping these commandments of the Most High. And we're the light of the world if we're the ones keeping the commandments. Let's go back to uh, Matthew. And like I said, this account, this is also in the book of Mark, the fourth chapter, verse 21 down to 25. I got it written down. You got Luke chapter 11 and 33 down to 36. Right, and we may we may may go into those as well, but let's continue on. So like you, this is a book of Saint Matthew, chapter five, and I'm reading fourteen again. Matthew chapter five, verse fourteen: Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Right, you can't hide this thing. You can't get the wisdom and understanding of the Most High and go and hide it. Like, let me get this real quick. The Lord said. Paraphrasing, it's better to um let me get this real quick as a rock. The Lord said it's better to hide your folly than to hide your wisdom. All right. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 20, and verse number 30. It says, Wisdom that is hid and treasure that is hoarded up, what profit is in them both. Right? If the most high is giving you understanding and you hiding it and you reserving it, hey, the most high is gonna destroy you. So you was given a wisdom to go spread that wisdom, not to hold it for yourself. The Lord gave you, if you have ears to hear, imagine this is filled up with all water, you understand? Living waters. And you're supposed to spread this living waters out. And the more you spread it out, the more the most I put back in your cup. But instead, you wanted to reserve it, and you put a lid on it, and you put it in your back pocket. Well, guess what? The Lord's going to take everything that you got that's inside this glass. It's going gonna, it's gonna, to uh, burst if you have ears to hear. All right? The most I never told you he give you the wisdom and understanding the living waters and you keep it and you reserve it for yourself. That's going off. Let's read on. It says, better is, better is he that hideth his folly than a man that hideth his wisdom. So you're better to hide your folly. Right? It's better for you to uh, uh, put your hand over your mouth when you think it's something evil. It's better to hold your peace we don't have nothing good to say at all. It's better to do, do those things than to hide the wisdom that the Most High has given you. So if you only know Deuteronomy chapter 28, hey, brother, go out there and teach Deuteronomy 28. If you have more understanding, hey, teach all that you got. You understand? When you're out there on the highways and byways, don't just try to teach and bring two precepts when you know a plethora of precepts. You want to go sow that light. You want to go wake up the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You want to go win and convert that soul. So let's go back to this in Matthew 5. I'm going to go to verse 15. It says, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Right. So continuing on with that same account. Um, In the ancient world, they didn't have, you know, uh, ceiling fans and. And what you see today, you don't, you couldn't go inside the house and turn on a light switch. That's, that wasn't going on. In the ancient world, they would have um, uh, fire, right? You have a some similar to this, right? You may carry it around. It might have something like a little handle so you can carry it around. 
you have a, a candle in there, your damn uh, flame is lit, and you can carry it around the house. Now, you're not going to go hot. What sense would it be if your house is dark and you have the, the light that can light up your house? But instead of you, you, you carrying it around and you put it and you hide it somewhere and you tuck it in your basement or you tuck it behind your couch, is it going to light up the house? See, the Lord, and that's the thing with our people, man. There is people that's in this world who have understanding of who we are. I'm sure LeBron, know, you know, he probably know who we are. I'm sure, damn, Jay-Z, P. Diddy, these men of renown, they know who we are, but they're choosing to sell out. They're choosing evil, and they're not choosing to serve the most high. There's those that's in um, men that claim to be, you know, have the understanding, these so-called five percenters, these so-called um, Muslims, these men who claim that they know things, and they know we Israel, even... um. And I'm bringing this out because even uh, uh, so-called Louis Farrakhan know that the so-called blacks and Hispanics are the Israelites. Even so-called Malcolm X, he know that the so-called blacks and Hispanics are Israelites. You understand? But they chose the world over the Most High. And at the end of the day, if you're choosing to serve this world and not stand ten toes down for the Lord, you choosing to hide your wisdom and tuck in your fringes and shut up and dribble, then the Lord is going to destroy you. Let's not, let's not make no mistake about that. That's the end result of you hiding your wisdom. Let's get another verse on this. Let's go to um, Sirach 41. This is Sirach chapter 41. Ecclesiastic is 41, and I want 14. Huh. This is Rock chapter 41 and verse 40, uh, 14. My children, keep discipline and peace for wisdom that is hid and a treasure that is not seen with profit is in them both. If, if somebody just told you for decades and decades, yeah, I got this treasure. I'm just hiding. I'm just waiting. I mean, what? And he says he's going to break bread with you. What, what profit is that? That's all about talk. That's lip service. Nobody wants that. You, you need to pay your damn bills now. So you're going to kind of and, and push that brother and like, look, brother, look, you're saying you're going to help me out, then help me out. But if you're not going to help me out, then I don't want to hear about it. You understand? That's a man that has a treasure, but he's keeping it hid. Hey, if this is the thing that's going to save our soul and we notice the one, that, the, the, the only truth that's going to save our soul, keeping what's written in the Bible and teaching our people, then we must go out there and teach our people and keep what's written in the Bible. I mean, that's plain. There's no sense, there's no profit in you storing your understanding in your back pocket. And we want to go to this in Luke on what the Lord is going to do to men that's uh that's holding holding back their talents in these last days. And I know some men, they they holding back their talents. They can go, they can push it. And even myself, I believe I can push it and go a little harder in the spirit. It's it's important that we do what we gotta do in these last days so that we got no uh Thoughts on woulda, coulda, shoulda's. Because in that day, when the Lord returns, there's no woulda, coulda, shoulda. When Jacob's trouble kicks off, it's no, damn, I should have read more. Damn, I should have talked more. Damn, I should have been out there laboring more. I should have made more videos. It's all over then. In the fourth quarter, you give it all you got. There are some people who like to pass the ball in the fourth quarter. They don't want the ball. They don't want the pressure. They don't want the whatever. They want to kind of, they want to, they want to be in the back somewhere. They're checking themselves out the game. Your damn, uh, it's a few more inches left in, in football. and You got to damn cross the goal line. Then they damn checking themselves out and they, they putting somebody else in their place because they don't want it. They want to, and they, and that truth be told, that man, he's probably ran that ball a thousand times and getting over that goal line from, from Pop Warner to damn high school to college. He can easily... Take that hand off and get over that goal line. But guess what? Now it's a big moment. It's crunch time, uh, clutch time, and he want to go sit on the sideline somewhere. We don't want to be like that. We live in the last days. You want to give it all you got. So that's the book of St. Luke, chapter 19. And verse number 13. I said at 12 real quick, and I'm going to jump down. And he said unto them, a certain noble, like a certain nobleman went to a far country. To receive for himself a kingdom 
and to return. And there's certain noblemen who went into a far country. He's talking about the Lord Yahweh Shai, right? He went into the third heavens, right? Let's read on. It says, went to a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return, right? All power. When you read Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, all power and glory is given to, you, to Yahweh in the name of his son, Yahweh Shai, right? You understand? So the Lord departing and having to give up the spirit so that we can have life now and we can come back to the Lord now a, is prophesied for him to return and for him to make a second coming and to deliver up those who's believing and keeping his law, statutes, and commandments. Right? That light. So let's read on. And he said, it's like, and he called his 10 servants and delivered them 10 pounds and said unto them, occupy till I come. So the Lord has spirits that's created from the beginning of the world to go out and magnify his holy name, to teach the people to occupy in the scriptures till he returns. So if you're holding back your talents, you're not being occupied in the scripture till the Lord returns. You're being lukewarm. One pinky toe in, all other nine toes out. You can't be doing that. So let's jump down. Let's jump down to... um. About the men that's holding back what the Lord had given them. Uh, verse 19. It's a, Yeah, I'm going to go to verse 20. And another came saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. So the first servant, he took what he, you know, what the Most High has given him. And guess what? He, he was, uh, he's made Lord over 10 cities. Second servant took what the Lord had given him. And he's made Lord over five cities. It is third one. This third man, it says, um, let's read again. And another came saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept up. It's like it kept laid up in a napkin. Now the pound is symbolic of the wisdom understanding that the most I will give you. You understand? He's given different men, different portions of wisdom and understanding. And it's those, those men, their role to take it, flip it, and bring back more to the most high. So let's read on. It says, for I fear thee, because thou art an austere man. Thou takest up that thou layest not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. And he said unto him, out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Right, because if he knew that the Lord was an austere man, why the hell would you play games with the most High's money? You know how the Lord get down. You know he's a man about justice, equity, and judgment. So let's read on. It says, thou knowest... That I was an austere man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. Wherefore then givest thou not, uh, it's like it. Wherefore then gavest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required mine own with usury. So if you was if you was a wise, understanding man, you want to hide the talents that the Lord given you, and you would use them to magnify His holy name. On a spiritual level, that's the equivalent of you taking that and putting it in the bank. Because you know in the, the reason why you're supposed to use the bank or the reason why they told us to use the bank, you would put your money in the savings account and over time it will grow. Us taking the wisdom of the saying the Lord has given us, it's the equivalent of us taking our money, putting it in the bank by teaching the people and over time it's going to grow. You're going to grow. You're going to see a man. He may have only known Deuteronomy, but he took that. He flipped that. Now he got Deuteronomy 28. Leviticus 26, he can break down, uh, maybe he can break down one major prophecy, Jacob's trouble. So now he got that. Now he took that, he flipped that. Now he can go into all damn seven seals. He took that, flipped that. Now he can go into Daniel 9, Daniel 11. He took that, flipped that, and now he got more understanding. And so on and so forth. So you don't want to be like this, man. Let's read on. And he said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound and give it to him to have 10 pounds. So you don't want the most high. And you know who I'm speaking to. You don't want the most high to take what you got and give it to another brother. And now you don't got no more wisdom understanding. He'll take your spirit and he'll apply that wisdom to another brother. That's why you see certain men, they, they rise right in the, in, in the spirit. They literally getting stronger and waxing mightier because they took what they had. The most high allowed them to flip it. They flipped it, and the Lord was giving them more. And then the men that had something, had some understanding, but they're playing with it, 
and the Lord would take it from them, they'll go back in the world and the Lord would give it more to the brother that actually is doing something with it. If you had a company, a business, and you have salesmen, a whole group, you got 10 salesmen that's out there, nine of them doing their thing, or I'll say seven of them doing their thing, and uh, three of them is not doing their thing. They, you know, they're not really make, they're not meeting the quota. And you're going to fire those three and you're going to give more resources to that seven. Right? It's better to be with 10 lions than 100 sheep if you have ears to hear. But those sheep, if those sheep not providing and doing nothing, I mean, it's, it's way less profitable. You got way more expenses, way more overhead. And I'm talking business terms. Uh, to supply, you know, them hundred workers, then ten that's, that's known to actually do something and bring forth, you know, more revenue and more increases in a company. That's why you're seeing um, these different companies they having layoffs, right? They're gonna they're gonna lay off the people that's not really working. They're gonna do cutbacks because they gotta they gotta make sure that they're staying staying profitable. If you have ears to hear, the Lord will cut you out the truth to make sure this truth is staying profitable. He don't want you to wax worse and. And now people that could have been brought in the truth through you, you just being evil, you smoking weed, you backbiting, you scoffing, whatever the case may be, you just being lukewarm, the Lord will cut you out, replace you with another brother, and then the most I will get the increase. So back to this in St. Matthew chapter five, right? And you may look at this, this parable like, okay, yeah, just, you know, you're the light of the world, city that is set on a hill cannot be hit. No, it's more than that, man. These, these, this is literally a parable for a reason. This can go much deeper. There's other precepts. We literally own a second verse of this, this parable. There's only three verses in this parable. Then we 31 minutes in. So let's go to this. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 15 again. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and they give a light unto all that are in the house. All right, Salakia. So let your light so shine before men. I'm going to get a quick precept. All right. I'm going to get another precept on that. Because again, the Lord said, you don't, you know, take a candlestick and literally hide it. You, you go in your, your dark house. You got your light. You got your candlestick. You literally blow the damn flame out and just walk around the house just in darkness. What profit was that? You literally, come on, man. You understand? So if the Most High is giving you this light, hey, use it. Go and light the house of the Lord. You have ears to hear. Right? Go and teach the people. Go and convert more souls. Pause the video. Take down notes. And go teach the people. I want to get out of here. If you want to get out of here, then you're going to go teach the people, man. And don't try to go out there and get yourself a name. You want to go out there and honor and magnify your Yahweh Shai. So this is the book of um, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 13. I learn diligently and do communicate her liberally. I do not hide her riches. So you want to learn. You want to be built up. And once you're built up, you want to not hide the riches of the Most High. You want to not hide and reserve uh, the wisdom in your back left pocket. You don't want to take the wisdom that the Most High is giving you. And you say, yo, go do something with it. And you take it and you put it in your, uh, your nightstand. The bottom shelf in your knife stand, your nightstand. If you have ears to hear. And you put a lock on it. Say, well, I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna need that when the Lord returns. No, brother, you, you ain't gonna make it. You ain't gonna be there when the Lord returns. So let's go back to this in St. Matthew. St. Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 16. Yet your let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. And that's the ultimate thing right there, right? Us letting our light shine before men, us uh, keeping the commandments, you understand? Sisters having a head wrap on, all right? Not what, you know, showing on your body, right? For the whole world to see. You don't want to be like that. You want to let your light so shine before men that others may see your good works, right? And in paraphrasing, and glorify your father, which is in heaven. You understand? So let's go back to this in first. Let's go to this in first Peter chapter two and verse number 12. Have your conversation honest among the Gentiles that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold. So like you 
glorify God in a day of salvation or visitation. So where we want to keep our conversation honest amongst the Gentiles, meaning when we had a workplace and we got our brothers uh, that's around us and other sisters and things like that. And hey, you want to make sure you're not being evil, uh, talking about folly. Just you are Israelite on the Shabbat and every other day of the week, you just a nigga. You're just a nigga. You know, that's not how you're supposed to be do uh, uh, dealing with it. You can go and um, be amongst, you know, your brothers and sisters that's in the world. If you're amongst them to teach them and heal them and bring them back to the most high. You can spend time with your family, but you want to watch the time you spend with your family because they're in the world or if your family's in the world. You understand? But if you with them, then you make sure that you're trying to show them something. You're trying to you being a light. You have your conversation honest amongst the Gentiles. It's not saying you go to the bar with all Billy's and Edomites. That don't make no damn sense. You somewhere in the, the uh, mountain somewhere with them um, uh, hickories and rednecks. Saying I'm trying to keep my conversation honest among the Gentiles. Ak. No, the Lord, that's not what the Lord is talking about. Even, okay, even on that, that same fold, when you at work, your boss or your manager, supervisor, they may be of the other nations. Now, are you showing, look, look, no, I need off on the Shabbat. I got to keep this uh, commandments of the Most High. No, they got a pizza party and they got pepperoni on pizza. No, I can't eat that. Look, the Lord said I can't eat, you know, pork. And you, that's another way of you keeping the conversation honest amongst even the heathen. You understand? So let's go to this in um, Philippians. So yeah, you can even break that down the other way as well. This Philippians chapter 2 and verse 15. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. So that's how we want to be. We don't want to come off as niggas. You got fringes on, but you a nigga. Or we just heard something tonight. We had a brother that was out there. He's a he's a mus a Muslim Jew, right? A Muslim Jew. That um occasionally he wear fringes, but he's a Muslim, and he wants to bring all all everyone in the world together, um especially those that's uh Arab, right? Arab. He want to bring the Arabs and the Israelites together. Um, and his new thing he created, Muslim Jews. And um, oh yeah, he's also he's also the, the most high God. He's also the son of the most high God, and he's also a uh, devil. But he spelled it, he said he's a devil, but he spelled it D-E-V-U-L, devil. So then he also says he's French, you know, he can speak French. So he's all those things. The brother he even says he's confused and he's lost. You don't want to be like that. that. That brother is not, you know, he's not been a light to the world. He's bringing darkness and pollution to the world. The brother, the brother don't even know where he's walking at. He's in the midst of darkness. He's just trying to find his way. If you found your way, if you on this video, you found your way. And a part of finding your way, now you want to teach others that same way that you, you walk in. And the Lord willing, the way you walk in is in righteousness, man. And you're not walking in evil. All right. So let's read this again. Philippians 2 and 15. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world. I'm going to get a couple more and we're going to close out. Let's go to Sirach, chapter 27. This is Sirach, chapter 27 and verse number six. It says, the fruit declared if the tree had been dressed so is the utterance of a deceit, it's like a conceit in the heart of man. So the fruit, hey, a man is known by their fruits and the works they bring forth. You understand? So you keeping the commandments, hey, you'll be known if you're righteous or if you're wicked based off your actions, based off the fruits that's sprouting off of that tree. And the Lord, hey, for Israel, we're supposed to pluck off the trees of the Most High. I Meaning supposed to eat the fruits off the trees of righteousness. You can't eat the fruit uh, fruit of wickedness. You understand? Or from the trees of wickedness. That's the deception that Adam had fell into. Getting down with the doctrine of the other world. We're not like that. 
And we have what we have. The King James Version Bible. You understand? Genesis through Revelation. You understand? The Apocrypha included. All right. If you have this, you have this one. It's Cambridge. I don't think it's on Amazon anymore. But if you have it, you have it. Or if you got the 1611, you got the Apocrypha in it. You understand this already. I need not to break these down, th things down to you. But what the point of the matter is, you don't want to be um, a nigga, a nigga woman in the midst of the world with the fringes on, with the head wrap on, because now you're making a ministry. It's like you, you, you uh, make an offense to the ministry, right? You don't want to be like that. You don't want to, you don't want to do that. You don't want to be the man that take up arms and go damn shoot down some Amalekites. Amalek, you don't want to do that. You want to be a, a, a servant of Yahweh Bashim Shai. You want to wait on the Lord. You want to keep these commandments. You want to teach the people. You want to be light to the world. Let's go back to this and see Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16. See Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You see that? So all of this is to magnify Yahweh Bashim Yashai. It's not for our own will. It's not to do our own thing. This is all to give honor and glory to Yahweh. Bashim Yashak Umalak Yashai. A little will he was edified. Most I willingly took notes. Like I mentioned, this same account is also in um, Mark the fourth chapter, verse 21 down at uh, 25. All right. You understand that? Um, it's also in Luke, St. Luke chapter 11, verse 33 to 36. And we may touch on that one. We may touch on that one in another separate video. Because that goes a little bit uh, into a, um, a further, you know, breakdown. It's a little different than Mark and Matthew. So, most I willing you was edified. Most I willing you keep in watch. And most I willing you keep in the Shabbat. By call all Yahweh by Shema Shagum like Yoshai. Kwame Asherala, keep watching these last days. Hey, if you in the um, Connecticut, New York, Rhode Island, New Hampshire area, Massachusetts, wherever, the East Coast, Come out to Rhode Island, um, subscribe to the, uh, or follow the Watchmen for Israel Instagram account because we posted the address to it, right? Where we're going to be at Rhode Island, teaching the people out there in Rhode Island, a mighty groundbreaking Mosai Willa. But with that, Kwame Shalom.